Hello everyone, Stephen here from Red Adolescence and welcome back to another fragrance review. Thank you for watching. And in this video, we're going to be taking a closer look at the winner of my subscriber's choice. This is a fragrance from the house of Yves Saint Laurent and the fragrance is called M7. So here's the bottle. This one is a 2012 release and the perfumers behind this one are Alberto Marias and Jacques Cavalle. Alberto Marias has of course done Acqua di Gio by Giorgio Armani. Both of these perfumers have quite the extensive and impressive backlog of perfume creation. So very well developed noses and very well reputable perfumers in the industry. Now the name M7 comes from the fact that this is the seventh men's release from the house of Yves Saint Laurent and uh, Yves Saint Laurent was previously owned by Tom Ford, or I should say Tom Ford was a creative director, and this is the second fragrance that he's made for the house. So this is a monumental fragrance for the house of Yves Saint Laurent, and it does get a lot of praise. Unfortunately, it is currently discontinued. It was reformulated and then subsequently discontinued. Now, the other version on the market is M7 Fresh, and there's also one that's still on the market called M7 Oud Absolute. I'll be making some comparisons between the two a little bit later on, and we'll also talk about how to tell the difference between the original formulation and the reformulated version a little bit later on. Lastly, this fragrance is classified as a woody oriental fragrance and I would totally have to agree with that classification and I'm going to let you guys know what I think about the smell. Next up, let's take a look at the presentation. So here's the presentation for the original formulation of M7 by Yves Saint Laurent. Here's the box, name of the fragrance, name of the company, size and concentration down here at the bottom, UPC code at the bottom with the serial number located to the far left. And then on the back, you have a few ingredients. I know that the reformulation, I believe, has more ingredients than this one does. So that's usually the biggest indicator that this is the original formulation. Nothing going at the, at the top. And that's it as far as the box goes. Now here's the bottle. You have a silver rim. You have have the cap comes off clicks into place I think that this is kind of like a unique 80s uh, traditional looking presentation with the uh, atomizer slightly to the left uh, you have a sticker at the bottom with your important information and the other thing that you can use to distinguish the original from the reformulated version is that the reformulated version has a sticker at the back which gives the bottle its amber color whereas this one is amber all around so the reformulated has a sticker at the back this one is dark opaque and ambery all around. Now the distribution on the atomizer is great. It fantastic distribution. Um, I don't want to spray anything because I don't want to waste it. Uh, discontinued original formulation. But that was a presentation for M7 by Yves Saint Laurent. So my friend YL writes, it makes me feel like a sexy millionaire. Ismael continues by saying it's a woodsy smell and definitely something I'd wear to a formal suit and tie event to stand out from the rest. Gabriel says this is pizzazz in a bottle. Mustafa says it's very synthetic and it has some sort of a cherry kind of smell that I can't stand. Vincent loves the mandarin and the bergamot in the fragrance. The oud and vetiver are very nice as well. Tomo calls this a YSL masterpiece. It opens like pure Havan with the strong woodsy cherry smell. Don't understand why they gave it a spaceship kind of a name. And Carlos concludes by saying that it's one of his personal favorites and it smells like Dr. Pepper. So what you get from this fragrance, as far as the opening goes, is that it opens up with a little bit of citrus. You get a little bit of an orangey nuance in the opening, and the orange note is rather nice, and it gives you an appealing, and it eases you in to the composition, right? It's a nice, easy uh, introduction. But unfortunately, it is a volatile ingredient, so it's not going to last more than like one to five minutes. It does dissipate rather quickly. And then what you're left with is this woodsy, ambery backbone. Now, I think amber is a very strong note in this composition. And of course, amber isn't really a note, it's an accord. And it could be comprised of resins like myrrh, labdanum, benzoin, even vanilla. So a lot of people, when they smell M7, they say it uh, smells kind of sweet to them. Some people say it has a cherry sweetness. Some say cherry tobacco sweetness. And I can definitely see what people mean by that. Now, I don't get anything fruity about it. So I don't know if I would go as far as saying it smells like cherries but I do get a bit of sweetness from it and that could be potentially coming from the amber and I'm pretty sure it is now I think that the resin that is most dominant in this composition is the resin of benzoin and benzoin has a medicinal quality it's just a little bit smoky and it also has a vanillic overtone so I think the sweetness is coming from the amber accord but a lot of people also say they get an incense feel from this one that could be coming from the myrrh resin if one is indeed used in this fragrance but it 
it could also be coming from the benzoin resin as well which kind of gives one the impression that there is incense in this fragrance when in fact there might not be any incense in here but I think it's a really nice fragrance in terms of the amber accord and I think it does wonders in terms of really taming down that agarwood note or that oud note and I really have to applaud this fragrance and what Tom Ford did with this fragrance because this was really the first commercial use of the note of agarwood in the designer market and of course subsequently years after this one we see other fragrances like Dirty English by Juicy Couture but this is really the originator and I think this is really a monumental fragrance because of that when you think about the development of aquatic fragrances usually you go back to cool water by Davidoff well I think what Tom Ford did is he kind of imagined what the trends would be like and he foresaw or you know in a perspective way what was going to happen and he decided to tackle it in his own composition of course he's not the composer but in his creative direction he allowed the creation of this fragrance to happen so I really do have to applaud him for that so you get the citrus you get the orange you get the amber which is mostly benzoin you might have a little bit of incense in the background but you get a little bit of smokiness and then you also get the oud note now I don't think that this is a very medicinal body odor like oud and for those of you who know what I'm talking about um, I know a lot of us have heard a lot of things about oud and many of us kind of like cringe at the fact that uh, a fragrance contains oud a lot of things people think it's going to smell medicinal or like body odor and you just want to do away with it you want to stay away from it and this fragrance I think it's rather tamed and that's because of the sweetness because of the resins because of the citrus and because of this balmy characteristic that it possesses some people say powdery I get more of a balmy quality almost as though this fragrance contains iris and I know it's not listed in the note breakdown but I do get somewhat of a balmy quality from it now it's not too strong that it smells lipsticky or floral or anything like that but I think it's enough to really tame the composition now the oud note, it doesn't smell too strongly of oud. It actually smells more woodsy in my opinion. But there is something that gives it that masculine, manly, rich, unapologetic feel. And I'm more than certain it's coming from the agarwood note. So I really like the way that it's done. And as far as performance goes, this fragrance is no slouch. So I've only smelled the original formulation of M7. And I can say this is one of the longest lasting fragrances in my collection, uh, 12 plus hours for sure. And lastly, I also want to say that there is a little bit of patchouli in the dry down as well. Now I know it's not formally listed as a note and I have to go back to this because a lot of my subscribers were telling me to make a comparison between this fragrance and the most recently released Oud Absolute by Yves Saint Laurent. And what I have to say is that they are very close cousins. Now I am only going off a sample of Oud Absolute so please take that with a grain of salt. Now I find Oud Absolute to be a lighter version. When you're talking about the power that the original formulation of N7 packs and you compare it to the Eau de Toilette Oud Absolute which is selling for a pretty Pretty affordable price you're not going to get the same exact thing you really get what you pay for and I think as far as the Oud Absolute version goes it includes an note of patchouli it doesn't have amber but it has labdanum as a base note and labdanum is used in the creation of the Accord of Amber so even though this one doesn't contain patchouli but it does contain amber I actually still smell patchouli in this one so I think that the similarities are actually quite the same. <laughs> I think that they're there. So if you cannot get your hands on a bottle of M7, whether it be the original formulation or the reformulated version, I think if you wouldn't mind settling with a fragrance that is about 80 to 85 percent similar, definitely go with Oud Absolute. I think it's a little bit more versatile. I think it's a little bit more friendly in social scenarios and it doesn't quite have that daring polarizing effect that this one does. Now I do have some good news. There's another fragrance in my collection that I also think smells rather similar to Yves Saint Laurent's M7. Again, it's not a carbon copy, it's not a clone or a replica, but it does smell rather similar and I think it's suited for the same scenarios. It's by John Varvatos and it's called John Varvatos Platinum Edition. So if you have the money, you want a fragrance of this compositional nature, a bold, rich, unapologetic, daring, manly, and masculine scent, this is definitely a scent that you should check out. Now the performance of this one is also pretty good as well. So if that's one of the reasons why you are opting to buy this one, don't worry about it. You are going to get good performance from this one, despite the fact that a lot of John Varvatos fragrances don't give you good performance. So overall, I think this is a great fragrance, but I do have to conclude by saying it's not really a compliment getter. My fiance didn't like this one. It is a little balmy. Some people have compared it to other powdery fragrances. And there's something about this one, maybe the woods, maybe the amber, maybe the combination of the two, that doesn't really do too well in the compliment department. So guys, thank you for watching. Last up, we have the rating. 
First up we have uniqueness and overall smell and I ended up giving M7 by Yves Saint Laurent a 10 out of 10. This is a fantastic scent, it's very unique, it was the first commercial use of the note of oud and Tom Ford did a fantastic job with this one. Fixatives were used successfully, hence the reason why it lasts as long as it does. Great smell. As far as longevity, 10 out of 10. This one will last 12 plus hours on your skin even after you wash it off. As far as projection goes, it sits a little bit closer to the skin but I also gave it a 10 out of 10 because you don't really want it to jump out and choke somebody out. This one you want it to be a little bit more on the moderate side and I think that's what it does so perfect projection but versatility is a little bit compromised. I gave it a 6 out of 10. Now there's nothing feminine about this one. I personally find this one to be very masculine despite the fact that it has somewhat of a balmy characteristic to it. I think in terms of age range you need to be a little bit older for this one. I wouldn't wear this one casually because of the compositional nature but because also of the fact that you, it's kind of hard to find it. I wouldn't wear this on a date because it's a little polar polarizing and I wouldn't wear it on a night out because even though it has a little bit of sweetness I don't think the sweetness is too strong or too pronounced that you can get away with it on a night out or like a club or a party or something like that so just suit and tie formal semi-formal definitely would work very very well now because of its compositional nature and the performance and because of how good it is I would recommend this for the fall and winter seasons I wouldn't wear this in the dead of summer or even on a uh, on a warmer spring day and then lastly as far as presentation goes some people like it some people don't like it I'm personally not too crazy about it I think it's okay it looks kind of cool I ended up giving it a 7 out of 10 for presentation and overall I have to give M7 by Yves Saint Laurent a 10 out of 10 now I think that this is an amazing fragrance. This is definitely a daring fragrance, quite polarizing, definitely did things in a unique way and you will not find any fragrance on the designer market that does quite what this fragrance does. I mean yes you will still find John Bravados. I think this one is kind of close to it in terms of the composition but this is the originator. This is the one that started it all. This is the one that set the trend. This is the monumental fragrance. I love what Tom Ford did with this one. It really is a shame that they decided to discontinue it. I don't like Oud Absolute as much as I like this one but I think that if you have the money if you're looking for this fragrance if you're a collector this is definitely worth the purchase so there you have it guys thank you so much for watching that was my review of M7 by Yves Saint Laurent if you owner have tried this scent please let me know what you think by leaving a comment down below also please don't forget to rate and subscribe for future videos once again everyone thank you very much for watching this has been Steven with another fragrance review from Red Essence. we'll see you soon